Australian performing Dolly? No. Tonight was just an unfortunate mistake. We're casting for a new Dolly at the moment. Let's see what you're made of. She's bright, she's bubbly. <laughs> Nipples to the sky. Three bras, Dolly Centric. Oh, wow. Makeup's a little extra. Crew, my yes. city fest Oz buddy. How are Hi. you? Good, thanks. So you're up early? Oh, it's, it's not too bad. 7.30. Okay. Uh, and now, obviously, we go back to Cinefest, but uh, are you going to introduce me to your mate? Oh, this is my gorgeous friend. <laughs> <laughs> this is my gorgeous <laughs> Rose Byrne. She's the best what person is? in the world. What yeah, is? Rose, uh, welcome as well. And now, you guys work in an industry where sometimes it can be hard to tell who your real friends are. So what was the moment where... You both realise that she's my kind of people. Gosh, I, I can't remember the exact moment, but no. I do remember, I've, I'm going to guess that it was at a party in Balmain and that we realised that we had a pretty similar sense of humour. Or maybe, was it then? Somewhere around then? Was it, we met so was young cool. before the team, so it was like almost it's before the business, it's before all of it, so it's like a, it's a, Right, it's a friendship with a lot of history. Um, and in that way, it's actually a safe harbor in the business. So always, and then when we decided to work together, um, it was a big decision, but it's, I don't know, our closeness is never dependent on work. It's its a far sort of more, you know, richer, richer tapestry, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and so crew, we've spoken about the film before. So I, I know the origins of the script for you. Uh, and then Rose, you've got the script and it's all kind of hinging on the sign off from Dolly herself. And, and at six months pregnant, you've traveled to see uh, Danny Nozell to get, to get that sign off. Can you tell me about that trip and what that meeting was like? Um, the trip I was shooting Bad Neighbors part two in, in Atlanta, Georgia, I was by myself for a little bit of that time and I had a weekend I, you know I had the weekend and I drove down there I got the green light come down let's do this meeting on like a Saturday morning or something and um I drove down by myself I listened to like talk back Christian radio the whole drive <laughs> because of all I could get on the radio and I didn't have a iPhone I guess <laughs> <laughs> and it was also I just like immersed myself in this southern part of America and um I drove through Chattanooga and arrived on at the studio at his offices and handed me the script and said would you could you will you can you <laughs> you know can we work with you we we this is a love letter to dolly please can you put it in her hands and we'll you know this is a hail mary for us you know independent film is incredibly challenging to do and to be part of and it's like pushing a huge boulder uphill so and this film was um it's all about music and her music and so with, without that without them working with us without her blessing and without Danny Nozell helping us navigate the rights and all the continual continual um you know rabbit hole that that is we, we wouldn't have made it and so then for you crew to, to know the dolly had personally been so enthusiastic for this project. What did that mean to you? I mean, it was everything because it made me realize, okay, cool. I don't have to rewrite it. Because really, if I was thinking, if Dolly says no, what am I going to do? And I thought maybe then I would change it to Carly Minogue <laughs> or Olivia Newton-John. They were my two go-to women that I also think are incredible and interesting and fun and um but i didn't have to because dolly said yes and um away we went yeah then we then it took us eight years to convince everybody else <laughs> so that's the amazing thing that that dolly was actually easier to convince than than anybody else and and so the fact that that there was so many hurdles that you had to get over do you think that speaks more to how hard it is just to, to make an indie film? Because it is difficult to make any film really. Or does it also talk about like, the thing that Dollhouse Pictures is, is about representing as well, right? Like female voices on screen, female creatives behind the camera. Was that part of the hurdles that you needed to jump over with this product, uh, project? I guess 
we will probably never know. Um, but yeah, we had to convince a whole bunch of people. And as um, Rose pointed out, it is, um, it is like pushing a boulder up a hill, but there are so many cooks in the kitchen. So yeah, we had to get going and convince, this is also where it was our first project and um, start to, you know, one by one tick off everybody who thought it was a good idea. And also in Australia, we were, we, were, we really have left, we had left the pattern of doing your murals and your, um, and your Priscilla's and strictly ballrooms. And then it's felt like it'd been a quite a big drought of making your red dog got in there, but making something that was um, not just a hard hitting drama. Mm. Or a genre film, right? Like it seems like Australian cinema is yeah. so bogged down in genre films at the moment. And Rose, like I think, well, Crew talks about those classic kind of Australian comedies, whether it's Muriel's Wedding or Priscilla or The Castle. Like I really got the sense of those films from watching Seriously Red. Like what did those films mean to you uh, as, a, as a young actor watching them back in the day? Well, the thing about all those films, that there's only like classic narratives like that, it, it's about the underdog, you know, and that's a quintessentially Australian story, the underdog, the outsider, and that, you know, the fish out of water and and that that this really is like part of that narrative and part of that continually kind of telling that story and celebrating that story. And I feel like we fall in line with that sort of the legacy of those films. Hopefully, you know, that's what we're striving to do. But that's something that I always identified with this with this piece culturally. I feel it's very strong. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it absolutely nailed it. And so Crew, what was the hardest part of playing Dolly? Mm -hmm. Well, it took me about a week to get Dolly fit. Um, and I, I guess I underestimated how, how heavy the wigs were and how etched in, they, in my brain, how, like how ser seriously they were screwed in there. Um, and also the outfits and the corsets. So that was probably the, the most thing that kind of took me by surprise. I was like, oh gosh, I've got a headache. I've got a headache, but I can't, oh, I can't lay down. Get wigs, wigs on. Oh, I'm just going to sit the, the corset. Um, so that was probably, that took me a second. To and what up. was that? And what was the, the hardest part of playing Red? Because it's a character that is like often quite raw and unvarnished. Yeah, I love that. You know, I'm just, I'm so, I'm really interested in actors and actresses and stories that are, um, I guess, accessible and that aren't self-conscious. So as an actress, and well, particularly with Red, I, I really tried to be, um, for me, just sort of in the moment and allowing Red to feel self-conscious, but for me as the actress not to be too self-conscious, because that's interesting to me. That's I that's what I'm interested in kind of looking at. So um um yeah, I I, I loved I, I mean I just I love the character Red. She's just so close to me and such a um such a sort of part of my life in a way. So allowing her to be as as wonderfully nuts and impulsive and raw and um buttoned up and all the different things that she goes through um was just so much fun you don't really fit in in any office red you're a mess John and stretch and try to come to life. you're fired you can't fire me because i quit <laughs> Awesome. And talking about fun, for you, Rose, playing Elvis, you know, Austin Butler is getting a lot of buzz as Elvis this year, but he, that's my second favourite Elvis on screen. It's, it's Rose Byrne as Elvis. Was that a load of fun or was it also something that you thought, oh, do you know what? Like, I've got to take this a little bit seriously. It's the king. <laughs> um I, I adored it. It was so fun. It was it was so fun. And the key was, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of twice removed from him because it's a cat, you know, I'm playing a character who's playing Elvis. So it was, yeah. and the, in, the, in the narrative, it's really, you know, there's a shroud of mystery around this character. There's a bit of menace. There's a bit of danger. There's like a, a huge, deep humiliation and pain that he kind of caught that, that uh, drives red. And so um, it was fun to sort of imbue that with another twist of having myself play it. Madonna, don't listen to Elvis. I don't like to be like everybody else. That's the easiest thing in the world to do. Love you, Jolly. 
But you ain't the real deal now, are you, darling? And, you know, exploring those gender lines. And I really loved it. I immersed myself in footage of him and what it was all Crew's idea. She's like always thinking outside the box. And we knew I wanted, we, I would do something in the film, but we weren't sure what. And trying to figure out that kind of fine line of like a cameo, but something more. And this was just the perfect fit. And um, it was just, it was so funny. It's so funny. I look exactly like my nephew, Eddie Cook. It's so funny. Not only. Stuff. There's no prosthetics, and people still don't know it's me, even though they know that I did some tribute performer in the movie. That they're like, wait, what? Huh, what? You know, and Gracie Otto, our director, she was very clever how she shot it. It was always shrouded in darkness and from the back, and like she was very, really um specific with that kind of revealing of of, of that character. So um and, and, and it's, your, it's your performance, you're such a chameleon, it's you're such a solid performance that people 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 yeah people know that you're in it but they they just they go with the story which is amazing and they go oh this, this is sort of like just a, a nice soft elvis and it, I'm, I'm getting people all the time texting me or facebooking me going i didn't realize until halfway through i didn't realize until right at the end <laughs> like like what do you mean <laughs> it's it's so it's yeah so, so it's so, it helps that it's introduced within that world too and it's sort yeah. of this height partly so it's like it's a it's a testament to the script and, and the direction i think that it's sort of it's um introduced in a certain part where you're not um necessarily expecting it to uh and i adored it it was so fun yeah it's so fun and you've got such a fantastic feel for comedy rose i, I guess what attracts you to those types of roles what do you really enjoy about comedy well, there's a great quote, and I'm going to steal it from um, Catherine O'Hara, one of the mm. you know incredible actresses, um, good comedic actresses, who says who describes doing comedy like it's just the same as doing drama, but on top of that, you've got to get a laugh, and that's always how I've seen it. It's like approaching it with the same, all of the same work, and on top of that, finding the laugh. You know, I, ha I had a friend who did a um, play with um, with uh, Larry David on Broadway, my 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 stepson, and he he used to say that Larry asked him what how asked him once, you know, when you're doing a drama on stage, how do you know if it's working? And I thought that was such a fascinating thing. It's like, how do you know if it's working? Ooh, yeah, you no, know straight away if it is working or not. And you can constantly dig and find more and more. Particularly if you're doing a play, you know, you can just find more and more and dig deeper and deeper to find more laughs. And and uh, and in the end, it is from the same place. It's not to be like a cliche, a cliche or cheesy, but it is, you know, it's the same wellspring. And now I'd love to get uh, both of your critiques. Fish. I will, can I just say quickly, is what Crew does so beautifully in the movie is this tragedy of this girl and that fine comedic delicate performance that you can do of the comic and the tragic because it's really that line that red treads um and it's it's a very it's a very gifted thing to be able to do it very hard and she really does it effortlessly yeah it's the classic kind of tragic clown thing that i think is so hard but you do it perfectly crew and, and quickly like i'd like to get your critique on bobby's neil diamond what a showstopper. That bloke's seen stealing a little bit. But he's like a karaoke guy. Like he just goes into karaoke oh. all he's done that for years. So it was just, I think it was just an extension of that, except he had to wear like leather pants, you know. <laughs> so he was just playing himself basically. I mean, I don't I'm just like, I've seen him do that so many times, like seeing <laughs> karaoke. <laughs> Not to just outright dismiss his performance. <laughs> 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 amazing uh, and finally i want to just quickly touch on dollhouse pictures as well i think it's so exciting and awesome and and the collection of talent gathered together for this is super super exciting like what does that mean to both of you and what do you hope to see out of dollhouse pictures in the future oh uh, yeah we're so excited um and you know i've really felt along this whole process that the dollhouse girls have really become my mentors as much as my collaborators and um we're, we're thrilled we that we we're just going to continue doing what we're doing which is really celebrating and 
bringing together great stories, hopefully sharing, you know, Australia's talent, but in an, in an international forum. And um, yeah, just kind of, yeah, harnessing, harnessing our individual 20 years of um, experience and bringing it together and mushing it up and um, sharing it with everyone because that's what we'd love to do. Just tell stories, I guess. Abi, what do you think? Yeah, I think you made a good point of like, this is this is our first project project to be released, like a full length feature film. And um, it's really, it, independent filmmaking is so challenging. I mean, it is extraordinary challenging. And when we started the company, the reason we started the company was because of this screenplay. And thinking um, it will take a while to get made, but it, you know, really did take a while. So there's a... Um, I think a humility to that and a learning process to that and a learning curve to that, which we've all had, um, and a continuous sort of excitement too about what's next and the development of other projects we have and novels we've acquired and so on and so forth and like continuing to learn about it. You know, we're, you know, I've very, always been very close with Nash Edgerton, who's a really old friend of ours, and he's been a great mentor to Crew and I about the business and starting a company and how it works and you know, it's those sort of relationships that I really treasure that are sort of over so many years that you can really confide and have that um, dialogue with somebody. So we're excited for the company. And this is a huge turning point for us to have a product out there. And we didn't just want to make anything, you know, so we've been slowly chipping away. Yeah, I love everything about it. I love everything about Seriously Red. Congratulations to both of you on the film. I know Aussie audiences are going to love it. It's a throwback to those great Aussie comedies. Crew, great to see you again. You Rose, too. thank you for your time. Uh, Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.